How you doing? Hey, what's going on? How are you? We're awesome. How are you? I'm great. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Trina's coming. We're all okay. crazy right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Right on. So what's that? What's is that? What what is that back there? Is that a painting or is that multimedia? Painting. Oh, it's a picture or a painting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Where's that from? <laughs> uh, we live out here in Colorado. It's one of the the lakes right out here. Yeah. I uh, yeah, I love Colorado. We actually went out to uh, Castle Rock to see some friends this summer. Oh, okay. Yeah, we used to live right by there in Colorado Springs, um, okay. and now we are in Montrose, which is the western part of Colorado. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. I got I got married in 2019, and we were going to go to New Orleans because okay, and and a hurricane was brewing, so we had to pivot pretty hard. So we decided pivot. to go. Yeah. yeah, we pivoted hard, so we went to Manitou Springs. Uh -huh. and this was this summer was our fourth anniversary, so my wife surprised me we went back there to the same honeymoon suite run by oh, a fine. couple and they're getting ready to retire so all of it's it was nostalgia it was pretty yeah. cool you know Good and stuff. they were still kind of recovering from because we, we got married in 19 right before the world shut down so they finally have gotten back to like doing what they're doing and it's pretty cool up there awesome where are you located i'm in kansas city so I'm landlocked. There's no, there's, there's no contour. There's no body of water. It's just nothing. There you go, pal. Have a great life. Where <laughs> so, are you from originally? Not I'm King. from, I'm from here. I'm from Kansas. You are? Yeah. My, my dad was born in Brooklyn and raised in Long Island. That's the so, accent. Yes. That's probably, and I didn't spend much time up there. So when I would go up there, my, my aunt and uncle owned a pastry shop. And it was hysterical. I mean, because that was when the whole Joey, Joey Buttafuoco thing was going on. Oh, and they're all yeah. smoking cigarettes and waving their hands and son of a bitch and everything, cussing in Italian, losing their minds. And it just, I was like, if I could record this, it would be gold. So oh my gosh. it's, so it's fun. But at any rate, it's great to meet you. Thank you for taking some time out today. I appreciate it. Sure, yeah, absolutely. for sure. Um, so before we get into your mission and helping mothers i want to know the last three years with covid was quite a thing and worked on all of us in its own way how did you survive it and how has it changed you in this kind of post-pandemic world we're in yeah you know interesting um because personally we had like the best first covid year uh when everybody else was sort of in lockdown trina and i are avid rvers and we yeah. went and we saw so much of this country it was so much fun and we talk about like oh everyone talks about the first year of COVID being horrible we were like looking at pictures we're like this was the best like <laughs> we were just out and about in nature and the kids were awesome and you know they are just about to turn nine so eight seven six they had no clue what was happening they weren't in school because we homeschool them so from a personal perspective it was actually pretty awesome obviously yeah. we've you know had some challenges just since then. Um, but from a business perspective, I think um, we've really been able to help moms go through that transition back uh, through this process, right? You know, there's, there's the COVID depression, there's the COVID weight, there's the COVID isolation. And so I think some of that is we've been able to really help moms uh, come, come through that and pull them to the other side. Um, and then our business is done online and just like this. So from a, you know, impact I don't, don't really feel like there was that. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's interesting because I think we're all on this level of PTSD and I think the camera still needs to kind of come out so that we can see what's happened. Yeah. <laughs> cause we're all, I mean, cause there's still like levels of people that aren't going out or if they do, it's a shock and they probably don't psychologically know why there's all of these levels of getting back into it. And then again, we got another variant. It's like, that was kind of the way the whole thing was. It's like, oh, well, you know, we're good. Go ahead. You got a shot. Go out there and do what you got to do. Oh, but wait, we got Omicron or, we yeah, got yeah, this, yeah. you know, so it's this push pull that we get from public health agencies and our psyche is just like, what do we believe? So no wonder why we're running around with all these nut job theories on what's going on and lasers from outer space. People's brains are just totally flooded with information and half mm -hmm. the time it's just malarkey. Yeah, and it's this, like interesting stutter, right? You're like, go, yeah. oh no, yeah. Yeah. Uh, come back. Not, so, not so yeah. fast. Come on back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, I think uh, it comes down to when I talk to moms about things that are happening in the world, and this could be COVID, it could be anything. 
it's really about focusing on the controllables. What is it that you can control? And you've got to look at, not you've got to, but people mm-hmm. in general, it's like, what is happening in your world that you can impact positively? So what is it that you can be doing for yourself so that you're not feeling stressed out of your head? Is it turning down the news? Is it meditating and hearing yourself say what it is that you need for you and your family? How can you positively affect what's happening in your household and keep it to be a healthy environment? Um, And then from there, how can you go out and, you know, affect your relationships and be the positive person that is, is spreading love and joy and then going into your local community and seeing what you can do within your local community. Those are the controllables, the variant and some of these big things, big conversations, um, while they need to be had, they don't necessarily need to be had all the time every day. But what can be happening every time, every day, is what we choose to do on a daily basis for ourselves, for our family, for the way we feed our bodies, what we tell ourselves. Um, Those are the things for me, when I talk to somebody who's feeling overwhelmed by the world, it's like, let's bring this down and let's get you in a healthy state of mind so that you can go out and influence the world around you um, in, from a really powerful, positive, loving way. And that's, I think, what came out of this was that there's now not this stigmata of like mental health, like, for instance, with Robin Williams, when people were like, oh, well, if you're depressed, just get over it. I think we've realized there's something that's more bone deep about what we're living through and that Mm -hmm. it's more acceptable for people to have these conversations and to go through these things because it was such a heavy time that we all live through. Yeah. And, you know, you, you liken like what you just said, it's, it's good to talk about it. One of the things that Tara and I have found is since writing our book, Crush Mom Guilt, is moms are opening up and talking about the guilt that they do feel. And it's, it's like, I, I mean, there's a one book review we have. Person was like, I didn't know that other people felt this, right? Like they didn't know and they felt like they were so alone. And so around, gosh, during COVID, you felt this thing. Oh my gosh, me too you know, and then you talk about mom guilt and they're like, oh my goodness, I didn't realize that that's what I was feeling or that other people, that I wasn't alone. Um, and so they sort of go hand in hand with what you're talking about is it's it's becoming the norm to begin to really talk about what's happening within ourselves. So if I was to put you in front of a bunch of third graders at a career day and one of the kids looked up at you and said, hey, what do you do for a living? How do you take what you do and make it understandable to a child? Love, love, love this. I actually, this is not the answer, but I used to be a teacher and I always like, uh, it's always, how do you talk to a third grader? How do you talk to a fifth grader for them to understand some of these like bigger, bigger things? Um, You know, I think we, my initial reaction would be that we, that you, you love to play, right? And you, you don't, you don't really think about it. Like you go on the playground, you do your art, like you love to do these things. And um, wouldn't it be so fun because what we do is we teach moms to just be able to play, like to be able to enjoy life, to be able to go do those things. Um, cause they don't understand. Right. So what did you want to be in the third grade? An astronaut. Okay. Professional athlete. Okay. Well then, I mean, you're, you're pretty close, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, so let's get to. What is the motivation for you? You know, obviously you're helping people, you're doing these things and you're not just going to a nine to five, you're, you're doing something a little bit more substantiated. So what is that daily motivation for you to do the work and to, and to accomplish what you want to get done? Good. Um, for me, it's, it's twofold. I see that living the, the values and the process and the system that Trina and I have put in place, how good I feel about myself and how I'm able to transcend that into our relationship and then into our whole family's relationship. So to be able to understand that there's so much pain in this world and moms really suffer from this mom guilt that we blow up and this lack of confidence and the, um, inability to be themselves is that if I can influence and continue to not only feel great about my life, but knowing that I have this kind of superpower to be able to shed this on to others um, is kind of what I get up for on a daily basis. Yeah, and and mine, um, when I was 30 years old, I had cancer. And I think that was the beginning of, I always knew what it meant to be fit, but I thought being fit was healthy. 
And then when you go through something as cancer, I started to really look into how I was feeding my body, what I was fueling my body with, and really learned I was way off base. Um, and so for me, it's really personal because I don't want any other human being to go through what I went through with chemotherapy. And so my passion is extremely deep um, in that way. But that said, I had to make a lot of changes. And with that is the knowledge that I know now. And so I don't stray away from living a healthy lifestyle because one, I don't want to get sick again. And two, I know that um, I feel great and I'm doing everything I can to not be sick. But beyond that, it's now I've got to take this and I've got to share this with other moms and um, specifically moms, but I share it with anybody. Um, but moms specifically is what we have fo chosen to focus on. So the other thing that fuels us are the heroes, the people that we look up to. Who's Who's been a hero for you? Um, for me, it was my collegiate soccer coach. Um, just always kind of, you know, vision oriented, head down, treats people the right way. Um, always looking to kind of get to that next level and has really fueled me and inspired me to do that. Yeah. I don't know if there's one person that I would say was my hero. I could think growing up, I always really loved my grandmother. Um, I love how she treated all of us. We have a big family and she didn't seem to you know, choose one over the other. And she was just always very loving and kind. I think from a business standpoint, I follow some individuals who work really hard, but they have really big hearts. And um, I, I just love that about who they are and what they're doing in this world. So quick aside about professional women's soccer, uh, Patrick Mahomes, his wife, Brittany, who is a professional player, they're building a stadium by our river here, like the first professional stadium. And it's really, really awesome. It's the Good case. For you. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's hopefully going to do what MSL did really usher in kind of this, this new wave of players. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting and people don't consider it, but we're going to get the world cup. Okay. Kansas city's getting the world. Getting there. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. I have no idea what I, I, I am still just eager to see how that actually happened like did we offer someone a board of people lifetime barbecue something went down okay so <laughs> uh but we are the soccer capital of america did you know that i did not know that yeah it's yeah. weird you know with yeah. sporting and we have facilities all over the place so anyway um when you mentioned soccer it got me going on that so let me ask you this if you could meet anybody alive on the planet right now and spend a little time with them who would it be Donald Trump. What would you ask him? Um, one, I would love to know the whys. And two, I would love to know I, I how you keep that stamina and how you keep that ambition uh, for something that you believe in so passionately. How about you? Um, so Marie Forleo, I'm a huge fan of. I don't know if you're familiar with her. I, I know I the name. Her. Yeah, I love her work. And uh, so I would say her because I love, I think she's a genuine individual. And I think what she's created for herself and um, her company is fantastic. But I would say that Taylor Swift is very close because I think what she just pulled off is absolutely mm -hmm. amazing. It's, cra it, it's crazy how these people just shoot up like uh, that um, redheaded kid. Um Oh, uh, what's his name? He fills stadiums all the time. Why can't oh, I? Uh, Sheeran? Yeah. Ed Sheeran? Yeah, Ed Sheeran. Like, yeah. like they, they just blow up all of a sudden. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you know they're big. I mean, Ed Taylor was not someone that was ever, like, small in stature. But the right. fact that this, I mean, I remember when I actually was in Colorado when it happened in Kansas City, and we were looking at the headlines, and there was lines that they had to take pictures from helicopters for just souvenirs the day before they even got here. It's like, how did this happen? It was like Beatlemania 2023. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very Absolutely weird. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant. It's crazy. So, yeah. but they need positive. All these kids need positive influences. And that's definitely a force of, of good. Yeah. Um, so what has been one of the best success stories that you've had? One of the clients, you know, you don't have to give out obviously names, but what is one that really rises up that makes you smile every time? Um, I have two, but I'm going to pick, pull one that, um, Tara, I remember her, her coming to me and just being like, man, this mom just is struggling with getting it together. 
And she actually has a daughter who is autistic as well. And her daughter's 16 years old now. And um, Mo went from not knowing what to do to now running every day. She's posting about it. She teaches a class at a gym at five in the morning. She gets up and she's out there. She has her kids involved with um, really special Olympics for her daughter and her son does a lot of um, sporting events and she's just really living what it is we talk about. And I just, I love seeing this person go from, I don't know what to do to now influencing others, right? I think that's really powerful. It's interesting. I got a confession to make. I almost feel like because of what I do, that I'm kind of like a power mom. I have a son who's 18, who's on the spectrum and I'm constantly busy. I'm constantly, yeah. you know, it's one of those things where you don't usually see dudes doing things a lot. And I'm very busy with the special Olympics and with everything. And I yeah, have been his whole life. So I understand that life. That's yeah. When you start kind of getting into that special needs world, there can either be there's, there's just, there's very stark black or white variants of what you decide you want to do with reality. And yeah. you, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, there, there can be an on off switch and, and there's variables that go into that because it's, yeah. there, there's a lot that goes into it. You know, our daughter is actually uh, on the, she's, she's, aut she has autism yeah. and some, some disabilities as well. So you were preaching to the choir about yeah. life and, and, and it's just, it's dynamic. Yeah, it certainly makes you see things and people in a whole different way. I never thought that I would look at reality and just everything in a different, it almost kind of feels like stranger things with the upside down world. Like you, you, de you get to see this other side that's been hidden for your whole life, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and I think it's really special. I, oh, I, I do too. I don't know. It's challenging. <laughs> right. Right? right. But they're so beautiful. But the one thing that I find very refreshing about Miles is that he doesn't get hung up on all these typical things at all. Like there, you know, there, there's a lot of things at in a, in a teen's mind that you just they just get hung up on, and it's mm -hmm. just not a part of him. You know, it's just yeah. there's there's a whole other agenda that's going on that's refreshing. Yeah. You know, yeah. but yeah. along with that agenda is there can be a lot of things that get hung up on that are just like. It's just like, okay. You yeah, know. we got to move through this. <laughs> yeah, no. yeah. Come on. Yeah. The yeah. car, the car is running. We have enough <laughs> gas to get to where we're going. Let's go. So, um, so let me ask you this. If you, if you had a dream tonight and you ran into a 20 year old version of yourself and you could give that version of you a piece of advice based on the life you've led and the wisdom you've gained, what would you tell your young version of you? Stop doubting yourself. I can't answer because that's my, <laughs> I just like, I think that, yeah, that's the emotion comes is like, stop, stop doubting and just do the thing. Like, don't wait because you like time just going to keep going by. Like, just do it now. Yeah. So if you could see any event in human history with your own eyes, anything that's happened on this planet, what would you love to have seen? <laughs> what was mine is world cup and brandy chastain ripping that shirt off i mean who yeah. doesn't want to be at that event man i remember that i i remember uh, exactly where i was at because we were just totally glued to that yeah oh man i mean just to be in that stadium to to be i just got chills that would have been so fun oh that was the first one that popped in my mind yeah mine is... maybe it's shallow but you know no <laughs> No, Mine is, uh, landing on the moon. Oh, that would be cool. You know, I asked somebody that one of the first people I ever asked, he said, I'd want to see the 1980 Olympic team win it again. And I was like, wait, hold on a second. You just said again, he was there. And he oh, was there. but it was so special. Go back. Yeah. Again. I mean, could you, Matt? I mean, no one walked in there thinking, all right, we got it. We're going to beat the Russians today. No one. Unless somebody was walked in drunk and delusional, that's about the only way it was going to happen. My the the birth of this question came from I love the 1986 Mets, and I would have loved to have been at that game where it went through Billy Buckner's legs. Uh -huh. I totally lost my mind. So, um, so of all of the things that you've done and accomplished and overcome in your life, what are you the proudest of? 
Oh gosh, that's a pretty deep one. We're we're entering therapy hour here. Yeah, I no know. this is good. Um, <laughs> man, how much pause time do we have? We can always edit. <laughs> Thirty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> right. It, it, this is like the Oscars award speech. Hold on, hold on, orchestra pit, stop. I think I'm gonna say that my relationship with Tara. I think it has been an extremely dynamic, I mean, I use this word dynamic, but it has been a very interesting journey for us. And um, I don't know, I'm pretty proud of where we are today. That's what I was going to say. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, it was getting a college scholarship to play uh, soccer and um, you know, to, to really see that through and, and make the most I could out of that time. So everyone out there has a perception of you, each individually, family, friends, clients, colleagues, but you individually run the show. What's your perception of yourself? So in other words, who do you think you are? Like, just like what words would we say to describe well, yourself? Well, so... When you interact with your clients, you come across with the persona. When you interact with your kids, you come across with a persona. When you run into somebody at the grocery store, you come across with a persona. When you, you know, play a sport with friends, you come across with a persona. But ultimately, there is an id, ego, and super ego, ego you're in control of. What is your perception of the overall entirety of who you are and what you present to the world every day? Um. I would say I am not as confident as people think I am or as the perception that I put out there, um, but that I don't let a lot of things bother me um, on the outside other than things that are really important to me. So if it's coming from my family or you know anything that's really, really close to me, I think is kind of where I get, you know, where a lot of my time is spent, mental time. I think um, caring would probably be one of the things that I, I have the ability to, to care about people and spend time with them and um, have them be seen. Um, but I also think I'm very, um, one of the things I love about myself is I'm persistent. And um, that I, I like that about myself and I can be, can be very disciplined. So after all this heavy, I'm going to, I'm going to soft lob something in here. What's the best thing about living in Colorado? What's not about the best thing about living Look in Colorado? Look at that. <laughs> Look at that pro answer. That's, that's oh, the man. Ferris Bueller. That's the Ferris Bueller's uh, day off answer right there. Yeah. I mean, you go into the middle of the mountains and you're just in nature and the universe. You can see the stars and you can just feel all the energy that comes from this beautiful earth that we live in. Trails, trails, and more trails, yeah. So if anyone wants to hire you, learn more about you, anything about your world, where do they go? Uh, simple, powermom.co, and it will take them to everything. Yeah. Everything. Okay, excellent. Hey, Trina, Tara, thank you so much for your time, for your story, for your passion, and, and getting through the therapy session successfully. I appreciate Love it. Love it. Thank you for all, right. all the food you bought, man. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Best of luck with everything. Send my love to Colorado. Thank all you. Right. Bye. Cheers.